In example 5, we will first have to find the derivative, but the goal is a little different. We want to find an equation for the tangent line this time. So um, whenever you're writing an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, or we like to use, I like to use point slope form. So there are a couple things we need. Um, so when you are writing your final answer, you will need the slope because it's an equation of a line, it's a linear function. I need my x1 and I need my y1. Once I have these three ingredients, I should be able to write the equation in point slope form. So they gave us x, at the x value over here, x is 6, so I'll say x1 is 6. If we know an x value, we can find the y value by plugging in that x value into the function. So if function is 3 over x, um, when x is 6, f of 6, if we plug in 6 in here, that is going to be 3 over 6. If you simplify that, y value comes out to be half. So y1 is half. So we already have three, uh, out of three, we already have two things. So um, the last part, slope. That's where we have to use the derivative. Now we need to find the slope of the tangent line. At x equals 6. And what is that? Slope of the tangent line at x equals 6 is going to be f prime of 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to find f prime of x. Okay, we're going to find the derivative. And then we will plug in 6 in there. Okay, we're not going to... Um, well, plugging in the x value into the original function got us the y value. But if you find the derivative and if you plug in 6 in there, it's going to give us a slope. So um, we don't have any tricks yet. We don't have any shortcuts yet. So unfortunately, mm, let us do it the longer way. Write down the limit definition of derivative. Um, f prime of x equals limit as, oh, I keep writing this. This is my mistake. Not x, okay? Never, okay? not x. But h is approaching zero, okay? Um, and the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h okay um there's going to be just one problem on your first exam i will ask you to use this limit definition if i ask you to use it then um write it down right that should be the first line just write it down once okay all right now let's focus on the difference quotient ignore this limit you keep on writing this until you plug in h equals zero but the first thing i need to do is i need to plug in this x plus h into x okay so that's what, where it's going to go in the x plus h will go right in so first thing i need to write down is 3 over instead of 3 over x it's going to be 3 over x plus h so let's write that down okay so it's going to be 3 over x plus h um and then what comes after that? The minus sign, right? So draw the minus sign right after it. And I need to do f of x minus f of x, right? So what is f of x? f of x is 3 over x. Oh, I'm getting uncomfortable. All right. Um, and all over, all over. But you know how, if you were watching my first video, I don't want to do it as all over h, so I'm just going to go do it as 1 uh, times um, 1 over h. So that's okay. My chair is so uncomfortable, guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and combine the like terms. What should I call it? I'm so not focused. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, subtract these rational expressions inside the parenthesis. So that means we need to come up with the common denominator. So how I like to do it, I write them kind of spread apart, okay, kind of spread apart um, so that I can squeeze in on the denominators of the other guy. So for the first fraction, I will multiply the top and bottom by x, 
okay? I will multiply the top and bottom by x because x is the denominator of the other fraction. Um, x over x, okay? And for the second fraction, uh, which used to be 3 over x, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus h. x plus h. Now they have a common denominator. Now they have the common denominator. All right. Equals limit h approaches 0. And then it's time for us to write the numerator in a single line. Um, the numerator is 3x minus 3 times x plus h. Let's go ahead and distribute. Let's distribute the negative 3 in. Not the positive 3, but negative 3. So what will that be? Let me zoom in a little bit for you. 3x minus 3x, and then what? Minus 3h. Okay, that's it for the numerator. And for the denominator, oh, I forgot to close that parenthesis. Um, the denominator is going to be x times x plus h. And I will close this big door and do 1 over h outside. All right, let's see if anything cancels out. Guys, I'm going to get a new chair. This chair is so uncomfortable. All right, 3x and negative 3x cancels out, right? What else? If you take a look, h and this h also cancels out. All righty, we're doing good. So limit, is it h approaches 0 of what's the only thing left on the numerator? Negative 3. What's the only thing? Well, the denominator is still x times x plus h. That's simple enough. It's time for us to plug in h equals 0. So wherever you see h, you're going to plug in 0. Okay, so um, negative 3 over x times x plus 0, which gets simplified to negative 3 times x times x. Well, x times x, we should write it as x squared. Yay! We just found the f prime of x, and that is negative 3 over x squared. This is the derivative, and this is going to give us the equation, oh, not equation, slope of a tangent line. Okay, slope of a tangent line. At what x value? What was the x value that we were thinking about plugging in? Let me go back up to find it. Oh, here it is x equals 6. So plug in 6 into your derivative function. What is f prime of 6? Okay, that is negative 3 over 6 squared. Negative 3 over 36. So that fraction reduces to negative 1 over 12. What we just found is the slope, okay? Slope of the tangent line at x equals 6. We can graph it at all, but um, let's go ahead and first answer this question. So slope is negative 1 over 12. Let me write that down. Negative 1 over 12. Negative. So I have m, x1, and x, uh, y1. So you know what? Let me go ahead and bring this, copy this down, and then I will go ahead and write the equation of the line. Oh no, sorry, my app froze. Let me go and open it back up. I hope my work is still there. Me and my iPad weren't getting along last week. I recorded everything and the files never saved. And I was like, and I told Vivian and um, Ahmed that I was gonna just not post the videos to see if you noticed it. And um, you noticed it, so I'm happy that you guys are watching these videos and that I'm helpful. Okay. So it was negative one over 12. So let me copy this down on a, like a place where I have, see all my work that I did, they, they just, I'm sure you wrote it down, right? You wrote it down. But um, my app once when my app crashed, um, it got rid of all my work. So so I have everything I need there. I have these three numbers, and I'm ready to do the point slip form. So point 
slope form goes like this. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Let's plug in these three things that we know. So the first side, left side is Y minus Y1, which is half, equals M, the slope. That took us a long time. The slope is negative 1 over 12. And in the parenthesis, let's do X minus X1, which is 6. Now, this is perfectly fine answer, so you can stop here. This is good stuff. But if you insist, oh, I want to write my equation in uh, slope-intercept form. I mean, okay, we're not going to stop you. You can keep on going um, and say y minus half equals negative 1 over 12x. And if I multiply negative 1 over 12 times negative 6, that's going to be positive 1 half. And then last thing that I need to do is add half to both sides. Add half to both sides. So y equals negative 1 over 12x. And then half plus half is a whole. So this is going to be the slope-intercept form. But on the exams, I'm fine with you leaving it in that form. Um, it's it's fun to... Guys, you want to graph this with me? How about... Why not? You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and um, hide my iPad for a second. Uh, but let me go ahead and open up a Desmos scientific calculator. Not scientific. Graphing. Desmos graphing. So I'm doing something a little extra. So if you got everything you needed, you can stop this video. But if you want to see some cool stuff, stay with me. So let's go ahead and graph the original function. y equals 3 over x, right? That was the original function. Now the derivative f prime of x came, um, no, 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 the equation of the tangent line. The equation of the tangent line that we just got was negative 1 over 12x, and then the y-intercept was 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a point, x, e, uh, the plot the point of x value was 6, and y value was 1 half. So take a look. I'm going to go to that area. Zoom in. Do you see that I zoomed in a little too much? You see the beautiful, this rational function, red graph, and the blue line, that's the tangent line, right? And can you see how this straight line, this linear function, touches that point 6? Um, at that one point, it's, it's, it's not a secant line. So at 6, that's just beautiful, I think. So if you want to confirm your answer graphically, I suggest you graph your original function, your tangent line, and see if they are really tangent at that given point. Okay, all right, so that's it for example number five. I may be back to do the rest of them. I'll see if you needed them. A um, couple students emailed me about how they wanted to see example four and five videos, so that's why I'm recording, but I'm, I don't know, the, the other part. You know what, I'll come back and record it. I'll, I'll come back and do the more, I'll do more later, okay? All right.